Hey Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ning and I'll be your host for the patch 12.12 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with updated tier lists for all 5 roles. Give you an idea of what's good and what's not so great for each role in this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos just like this one to ensure that you're always up to date on what's great and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everybody can agree that Riot does well. The skins. Okay, well, does well for the most part. This time, Riot has made a pretty huge mistake. With Ash and Night Pike being such an amazing skin, it's sort of set a really high bar. So, you'd expect to see the very next one being pretty great too. But Ash and Night Pantheon has caught a lot of flag from the community. And honestly, that's fine. Not every skin is going to be 100% a perfect hit. But what isn't fine is Riot's response to all the negative feedback. They basically said, well, we can't fix the skin before next patch, so you'll be getting it with all the stuff that you don't like. Which is very odd to me because they fixed the Firelight Echo skin. Sure, maybe it's true that they can't make the changes that they need to in time, but what's wrong with simply delaying the skin? I personally won't be wasting my Mythic Essence on this skin, and I hope you don't either. Everyone complains about Riot's money grabbing, but I personally think it's okay, as long as they're pushing out their usual high quality content. But they really dropped the ball here. Okay, moving past that mistake, we're seeing three new skins in a semi-new line, the Snow Moon. I say semi-new because while we haven't really had a specific Snow Moon skin before, it serves as a counterpart to the Blood Moon line in that universe. The three champions getting these skins are Caitlyn, Alawi, who is in a pretty dire need of an actual good skin, and Kane. Now, with the skins out of the way, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. This patch is almost entirely focused on champion balancing rather than systems. The only two changes are some adjustments to Night Harvester and Predator. Night Harvester's build path is now being changed to include Fiendish Codex. Predator's max movement speed is being changed from 45% at all levels to so a scaling 25-50% to depending on your level. The damage is also being changed while the base damage early on being lower but higher later, and the ratio is also increasing. So this is being considered an adjustment, since it's an early game nerf compensated by a late game buff, but I'd say overall this is probably going to definitely weaken the rune. That's because no one runs Predator for the late game. The most obvious abuser of Predator is Singed and Hecarim. We've been talking about it for quite a while now, but mid lane Singe is an incredibly broken yet heavily slept on pick. It's in the high 50s win rate wise, and it's pretty much entirely because it abuses Predator so well. It also allows him to vacate the lane and go destroy the enemy bot lane over and over again. And that's obviously all early game. Now, all of that being said, I'd also be willing to bet that it's going to be a viable pick or even a very strong pick. Even nearly having the movement speed of Predator still leaves you with a lot of ganking power, especially since they didn't touch the cooldown. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. First, we'll start with our top laners. Zack will be moving up to the OP tier this patch. Riot was quick to detect how strong Mundo started doing after patch 12.11's buff to tank items, but they've let a couple of other tanks slip by under the radar. Zack has already been back and forth between the S and OP tiers for quite a while now, and those small buffs went quite a long way for him. He's able to win or at least go even in most lanes, and with his kit having strong engage and a ton of disruption, while also dealing pretty good damage, he always ends up being a teamfight monster in the mid to late game. Another tank that's moving into his rightful place in the OP tier is Tom Kench. Tom is downright oppressive. In almost every single matchup top lane, you can literally run down your foe as long as you can land your Q, which is very difficult to miss. While he doesn't have a huge impact in 5v5s later on, since he doesn't really have nearly as much of a reliable CC, he still serves as a decent frontliner. But what you really want to do is just be a side lane terror. He's just as oppressive later into the game as he is early on. If you're building him specifically for it, you can even take on the strongest duelists like Fiora and Jax past 3 items, something almost no other tanks can handle. Lilia moves up to the OP tier as well. It's like the nerf last patch never really happened. She's doing just as well as she was before. She doesn't really have any bad matchups at all. You either outdamage your opponents in trades or you kite them until you do. The last chat that we have moving up to the OP tier for this patch is Poppy. She's sort of just playing shoots and ladders with the tier list for the past few months, usually hovering between the OP and S tier, but at times sipping all the way down to the B tier. With the tank items being buffed last patch, she's definitely on the upswing. She's an absolute counter to mobile bruisers, able to shut them down both in lane and team fights. But that's not the only class of champions that struggle to deal with her. If you're against super beefy tanks and juggernauts, you can flex her itemization, going for Divine Sunderer and Black Cleaver as her core. This allows you to utterly demolish them at all stages of the game. At that point, you may as well go Holebreaker 3rd and just roll them in a side lane. 
While the changes don't really seem that big, we'll tentatively be moving Fiora down to the S tier. But who knows, maybe the early game impact here will be huge. For all we know, she could end up even lower. Or maybe she'll just be right back into the S tier. We'll have to monitor her and just keep you updated with the mid-patch update. Another demotion that we're not too sure of is Mundo. He's so overtuned right now that a small nerf like this may barely even put a dent on him. So while we're moving him down to the S tier, we expect him to be a stronger pick in this tier, or even just end up being right back up to the OP tier. Like Fiora, check back on this one later. Malawi moves up to the S tier. She's been steadily climbing in performance lately. The main reason for that is just the general champion pool. The mobile top laners with a lot of outplay potential in their kit are getting weaker and weaker lately. Most of the champions just want to duke it out to the death, and that makes for an easy E target for a Lowey. Kled moves up to the B tier. He was just doing abysmal after the durability patch launched, but he's recovered to a spot where I'd say he's at least working well as a counter pick in some matchups. Uxian gets moved down to the B tier. He's super good in the right matchup, but very bad in the wrong ones. Anyone with that caveat to them can never be higher than this tier. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Trano moves up to the OP tier. He's just really good into absolutely every pick in the OP and S tier right now. His ability to seal AD means that he outdamages bruisers, and then he reduces tanks and juggernauts to squishy punching bags long enough to get shredded in team fights. Plus, he's super simple to play. A champ always gets a bit of bonus points if they're so easy that a Yumi player can just pick them up and look like they know what they're doing. All offense intended. Rammus also moves up to the OP tier. He may not look super flashy or feel like he has any crazy fun combos to him, but Rammus is able to consistently force so many ganks and make so many plays that you can easily win games with him without ever having to 5v5. He's another benefactor of the tank item buffs last patch. He was already doing fine before, and they really pushed him over the edge. Kha'Zix gets emoted down to the A tier. When you have a really solid early game and can snowball by the time the mid game hits, Kha'Zix is a monster that he's always been. But he's not doing that as consistently as he used to, so he doesn't belong in the S tier. We're moving Belle Veth into the A tier for this patch. Her placement on the tier list has been pretty wonky. We knew that she was super OP on launch, but her stats were so bad that we had to put her in the B tier. Realistically, she can probably be the best champion in this role when played super well. She's getting some nerfs on this patch, but honestly, I still think that she's probably at least S tier when played correctly. But since this is our mid elo tier list, we can't measure chance by the absolute perfect play. So A tier it is. Ivern was mistakenly in our B tier before this patch. He was doing so poorly that he definitely did not belong in the C or even the D tier. But now he actually serves the B tier spot. He's not an amazing pick, and definitely cannot solo carry your games. But if your team has good engage and a hyper carry that can use an enchanter, you could make an argument for picking him. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Vilkos moves up all the way to the OP tier. With being bursted down at 6 much less of a thing after the durability patch, his strong wave clear and poke makes him a pretty oppressive laner to deal with. He goes on to scale pretty hard, with some insane damage output in the later team fights. Singe is being moved down to the S tier for now. This pick has been absolutely disgustingly strong for months, since Predator turns him into a roaming monster. Both the Rune and Singe himself are being nerfed on this patch, and I think that he'll honestly still be very strong. But maybe it'll hit harder than expected, so this is another one where you want to check back in the next patch. We're adding Gragas to the tier list as an S tier pick. We probably should have put him here quite a bit ago. He's a bit off meta, but it's the only role that he's consistently been doing well for quite some time now. We featured him in some of our other meta videos, so he definitely deserves to be here. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane. Seraphine moves up to the OP tier. Keeping up with their theme of overbuffing a champion in one role to make them work in a different one, they just can't help but to throw more love her way. Is the balance team just clueless, or are they just geniuses that are just trying to sell that Ocean Song skin? Your guess is as good as mine. After dropping quite a bit after his last set of nerfs, Swain has bounced back to being the OP tier. There's not much rhyme or reason. The champ is just broken beyond belief. Even with some nerfs targeted at both him and Leandries, Bran has been doing well enough to get promoted to the S tier. He's got really hard to deal with poke and lane, since being within 600 units of a minion means that you're gonna be in his potential splash range. Post 6 his all in is super strong, and even being ganked can end up pretty badly and poorly for the enemy team if they allow you to get off multiple passive explosions. Heimerdinger's buff on this patch brings him up to the S tier. They may seem small, but his turret shoot a lot over the course of an entire fight. Then you have to multiply that by 3, since that's how many you could potentially have down at all times. That quickly adds up to a lot more damage in fights that drag out for several seconds. Karthus drops down to the A tier. 
It's still an okay pick for neutralizing lane, but other mages can actually stomp lane and still scale just as hard. To finish things off, we have our supports. Compared to the other roles, this one is definitely a lot more stable in terms of how many champions are moving around and to what degree those changes are. Janna is being tentatively moved down to the S tier. The thing is, Janna is way, way better than any other support in the game right now. This patch is nerfing her, but I still think there's a very solid chance that moving her down to the S tier is just a wishful thinking. She may still be an OP tier pick. Honestly, I don't know why Riot is being so ridiculous about this. If a champion is sitting at a 54% win rate for months on end, why not just go overboard a little bit and nerf them into the ground, like they would if the champion dominated pro play? Both Thresh and Nautilus are being moved down to the beads here for pretty much the same reasons. You can pick them for specific synergies or fill a certain niche in a team comp, but for the most part, they're just massively overshadowed by the higher tiers. Champs up there can either win lane harder or easier and just provide a lot more in teamfights later on into the game. Alrighty, that concludes our patch 12.12 .12 rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description box as well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.